it's teaching your children the eight steps of empathy. Now, the eight steps of empathy start off this way. The first one is ooh, ah, oh. So let me give you an example of a child. Child comes home from school, she's really upset because her friends wouldn't play with her. <laughs> My friends wouldn't play with me, it was really bad today. And so the parent says, oh, well tell me more, honey. Well, you know, they wouldn't play with me and they were mean to me, oh. So tell me more, honey, tell me more. Not saying, what did you do to make them mad at you? Stop that, that's probably not what happened. And that's the fastest way to lose them to the other parent because you're not paying attention to them, you're not nurturing them, you're not listening. So the second step, saying, you know, you must be feeling, and then you just make up an emotion, sad, angry, mad, lonely, frustrated, whatever it is. If you're wrong, the children will say, well, no, that's not it. But what you might find when you're dealing with a high conflict personality is um, they just really cannot empathize. And so they also have basically a difficulty with the range of emotions. A lot of high conflict people have two emotions they live under. One, total anger, being mad all the time, rage, whatever you wanna call it, and the other one being weak, a victim, needing people, or emptiness, some version of that. And in between, you know, feeling frustrated, angry, sad, mad, whatever it is, those emotions never get developed. So you as a parent, parenting to the 100th power, have to teach those emotions. So the second part of that is you say, you know, you must be feeling sad, mad, glad, whatever it is. And the child will say, yeah. Now, why is that important? Because you need to say to the child an emotion, right or wrong, because they'll correct you, that lets them say, ah, this parent gets it. Therefore, I must be normal because I'm having an emotion they can identify. Huh, I must be normal. We need to teach children that second thing where you say, oh, you must be feeling, right? Third one is, you know, I remember when I felt that way. Again, we reinforce that the child has normal feelings and behavior that the parent can identify. <sighs> children calm down. But number four is really important, especially in a conflict situation. And this is the teaching part that goes into really parenting to the hundredth power. Number four is when you say, you know, this might happen again. So let me go through the concept. One, child comes home, mom says, ooh, ah, uh, oh. Second thing, I remember when I felt that way, or dad says, you know, uh, you must be feeling sad or whatever else it is. But now the third, fourth one, when we get to the story, you say, you know, you might have a problem again tomorrow. So, you know, friends do things. Friends are not friends today. They're not friends tomorrow, you know. And so you say, um, you know, it might happen again. Now, I'm gonna diverge a little bit off of that story to explain to you that there are many situations when a parent who's a high conflict parent is going to be insensitive, they're going to be narcissistic, they're gonna be cruel, they're gonna be thoughtless, they're gonna dismiss emotions, they're gonna disapprove of them, they're gonna do something where they just don't handle it well. And the child is upset, or a behavior, okay? A parent who frequently leaves the kids at school when they're waiting and waiting to get picked up or a parent who uh, the child is gonna get an award and the parent shows up late or doesn't show up at all, or the child, um, or the parent starts talking about and bragging about them and the child's like, well, I thought this was my day. So those are the kind of things that you as a parent have to predict and not be surprised by them. You know, the parent's gonna do that. Now, instead of saying, you know, your, your other parent's an idiot, right, which you'd love to say. Instead, you say, you know, this might happen again, sweetheart. Your dad might do this again. Your mom might say that again. Your mom might go to bed and not come up for three days. Those things might happen again. So let's figure out, number five, how to solve the problem. If we know it might happen again, we're not surprised. If you understand the power of teaching children how to be ready so they're not caught by surprise, my ex-husband was always late bringing the kids back. Always late. Drove me nuts until one day somebody said, so was he late when you were dating? Oh, 
Yeah. So why are you surprised by it? Oh, yeah. You see, I had to understand that I was expecting him to do something that he was never capable of doing or willing to do. How many of times is your life energy focused on trying to get your ex to change? Trying to get the courts to, to punish them or see the light or give you justice or know the truth? You're wasting your life energy on that one. So if we go back to, you got to teach your kids how not to get caught in the lurch, how to be ready with number four, and then we start solving the problem with number five. Well, you know, this might happen again, so let's figure out what we can do. Let's go back to the little girl who doesn't have anybody to play with. So mom or dad says, well, how about your friend? I don't have any other friends. Okay. So we solve the problem. I know, honey, you have a jump rope. You have a jump rope in your room. So let's go get it right now. We'll put it in your backpack. We'll put it by the front door. And when you go to school tomorrow, you will have your jump rope. So if your friends don't play with you tomorrow, for whatever reason, you have your jump rope. So you're empowering your children to not be stuck. Remember the two fears I told you about that parents have? I'm going to lose the love of my kids and my kids will be messed up by the breakup. If I teach you and guarantee you that what I'm teaching about stringing pearls and doing the steps of empathy, if I teach you that those two things alone will take you to the moon and beyond with your children so they're not d damaged by the conflict, then I've solved the problem that, and you can reduce your fear. So when you think about it, you know, dad's always late. Okay, let's come up with a plan that dad's always late when he picks up the kids. Or mom's always grumpy or whatever the issue is think about all the ways you can solve it and you can tell the truth the truth is that this might happen again so we solve the problem then we role play we come up with a script we put the jump rope by the door we figure out what to do the next time we imagine we rope we you know we practice and then we we follow through and do it and step eight is what did you learn when the child comes back you say, so, did you need the jump rope today? How did it go over there? Now, I know I talked about mom and, mom's world and dad's world, but sometimes when you're really developing a relationship with the kids and you're no longer really angry at the other parent, you're stringing pearls, your energy is focused on creating a future with your children rather than on the ex. And you start losing the desire and need to react to them. The closer you get to your children, the farther away you become to the other parent. What did you learn from practicing those skills? What did you learn? What did your children learn when you're developing this? And it's always about learning something new rather than something's broken, we gotta figure out how to fix it or avoid it, stick our head in the sand. When I understood that I had the power to get rid of those two fears, when I understood it only took one parent to end the conflict, when I understood and became committed to parenting to the hundredth power, when I understood how to string pearls with my children, when I understood the eight steps of empathy, I turned my life around. My kids and I became like that. You never win custody in the court. You only win it from here and here, head and heart. You never win custody in the courtroom. You can have an amazing win, but if you lose yourself in the process, or if it's all about the fight and punishing the other parent, your kids still need to have a relationship with the other parent, even if they're broken, even if they're defective. They still need to have a relationship. Your ex will become like a barking dog chasing a car. Arf, 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 far, the car is long gone. And as one client said to me, you know, this class really helped me. I think of my ex as a fly tapping on the window. I just shut the window. I look forward to seeing you in another course or on the blog. And I wish you the best time stringing pearls with your children.